The term self-realization is widely used in Western philosophy, psychology and spirituality. This idea is also very important in Indian religions. Self-realization means fully understanding and developing one's true character or personality. It is about becoming aware of one's true self in a deep and liberated way. This true self could be seen as an eternal essence or the realization that there is no permanent self. The unique process that each person goes through to understand their true self is called self-realization. But what does this true self really mean? To explain further, self-realization involves recognizing and achieving one's full potential as a person. In Western thought, it often relates to personal growth and fulfillment. For example, in psychology, it might mean understanding your own mind and emotions and using this knowledge to live a happier and more meaningful life. In spirituality, it can involve finding a deeper sense of purpose or connection to the universe. In Indian religions, self-realization has a profound spiritual aspect. It can mean understanding one's place in the universe and seeing beyond the everyday experiences to grasp a deeper, eternal truth. For some, this might mean seeing oneself as part of a larger, divine reality. For others, it could mean realizing that the individual self is an illusion and that everything is interconnected. The journey to self-realization is unique for each person. It involves introspection, meditation, and often following specific spiritual or psychological practices. It's a path of discovering who you truly are beyond your external identity, roles, and societal expectations. This journey is what self-realization is all about, and it helps individuals find inner peace, clarity, and fulfillment. Self-realization means that the human soul, which is the true self inside everyone, has reached the end of its cosmic journey. To fully understand this, people need to grasp the relationship between the true self, the soul, and the physical body. Without understanding this connection, it is impossible to fully comprehend the true meaning of self-realization. The human soul is considered the true essence of a person. It is the core part of who we are, beyond just our physical bodies and everyday identities. When we talk about self-realization, we're talking about the soul completing its journey and reaching a state of ultimate understanding and fulfillment. To truly understand self-realization, we must first understand how the soul interacts with the physical body. Think of the body as a vehicle that the soul uses to experience life. The soul is the driver, guiding the body through the experiences of the world. Without recognizing this relationship, we cannot fully grasp what self-realization means. Imagine you are trying to solve a puzzle. If you don't see how all the pieces fit together, the picture will remain unclear. Similarly, to understand self-realization, you need to see how the soul, the true self, and the body fit together and interact. This understanding is essential because it helps you see beyond the physical aspects of life and connect with your deeper, true self. When you have a clear understanding of the soul's relationship with the body, you start to see life differently. You realize that the physical experiences are just a part of a larger journey. This insight brings you closer to self-realization, where you can find inner peace and a deeper understanding of your purpose in the universe. Self-realization is about the soul reaching the end of its cosmic journey. To understand this, you need to comprehend how the soul and the body are connected. Without this clear understanding, the true meaning of self-realization will remain out of reach. By seeing how the soul and body work together, you can move closer to understanding your true self and achieving self-realization. Self-realization is a deep and basic desire that exists in every human being. At its most basic level, this desire is shown through the urge to reproduce and ensure the survival of humans. All living things have a natural instinct to reproduce because they need it to continue their species. However, the urge to reproduce is just one part of a larger drive called the self-realization instinct, SRI. To explain further, 
Self-realization is the process of becoming fully aware of and understanding one's true self. This desire is a fundamental part of being human. It starts with the basic need to reproduce, because without reproduction, no species, including humans, could survive. This instinct is something all living beings share, as it ensures the continuation of life. But self-realization goes beyond just the need to reproduce. It includes many other aspects that help us grow and understand ourselves better. For example, people also have the desire to learn, explore, and achieve personal goals. These activities help individuals develop their unique abilities and talents, which is another part of self-realization. Think of the self-realization instinct, SRI, like a tree. The urge to reproduce is the trunk of the tree, providing the main support for survival. However, the tree also has many branches, which represent the different ways people seek to understand and fulfill themselves. These branches include things like pursuing education, building relationships, creating art, and finding spiritual or personal meaning. Self-realization is a deep-seated desire in everyone. It begins with the fundamental need to reproduce, ensuring the survival of human beings. However, this is just one part of the self-realization instinct, SRI, which also includes the many other ways people strive to understand and achieve their true potential. Through learning, exploring and personal growth, individuals work towards fulfilling their deeper need for self-realization. The drive to reproduce is a powerful force in nature. Take salmon fish, for example. They swim from the ocean and make a long, difficult and very dangerous journey upstream to reach the places where they lay and fertilize their eggs. They do everything they can to protect their eggs before they die. This instinct can sometimes lead animals to sacrifice their lives for their offspring. This powerful drive is just one part of a larger instinct called the self-realization instinct, SRI. In humans, the SRI shows up in many different ways. For instance, people have a strong desire to leave a mark on the world, to be remembered, or to stand out in some way. They want to achieve goals and succeed in their endeavours. This could mean excelling in a career, creating art, or becoming an expert in a certain field. Humans also search for purpose and meaning in their lives. They want to understand why they exist and what their life is about. This search can lead them to pursue various causes, like helping others, protecting the environment or fighting for justice. The self-realization instinct, SRI, drives humans to do many things beyond just surviving and reproducing. It pushes them to achieve, create and find meaning. It motivates them to stand out and leave a lasting impact. This instinct is a fundamental part of being human, influencing many aspects of our lives. For example, a person might work hard to become a successful doctor, not just for the money, but also to make a difference in people's lives. Another person might spend years writing a book, hoping to share their ideas and be remembered for their contribution to literature. Someone else might volunteer their time to help the less fortunate, driven by a desire to find meaning and purpose in their actions. The instinct to reproduce is a powerful force that drives animals to great lengths, sometimes even sacrificing their lives for their offspring. In humans, this instinct is part of a larger drive called the self-realization instinct, SRI. This drive pushes people to achieve goals, stand out, leave a mark, and find meaning and purpose in life. It influences many aspects of human behavior, from career ambitions to personal passions and the search for a fulfilling life. Self-realization is not just about big achievements or deep spiritual insights. It can also be seen in more everyday actions, like accepting and adopting new or unusual beliefs and ideas. In fact, any action that fills a gap or meets a need in a person's life can be part of self-realization. For example, when people get a job, they are fulfilling the need for financial security and purpose. Exposure to different experiences, whether good or bad, also contributes to self-realization by helping people grow and learn. Studying and doing research are other ways people seek self-realization. These activities satisfy curiosity and the desire to know more about the world. 
playing sports and engaging in hobbies are also part of self-realisation. These activities make people happy and help them develop new skills. Even meeting basic human needs, like eating when hungry or sleeping when tired, is part of self-realisation because it keeps people healthy and balanced. Amusement and entertainment, like watching a movie or playing a game, also fall under self-realisation. These activities bring joy and relaxation, which are important for a happy life. Self-realisation includes any action that makes people feel comforted, happy or fulfilled. It's about doing things that meet needs, fill gaps or bring joy. Whether it's adopting a new belief, learning something new, enjoying a hobby or simply having fun, all these actions contribute to a person's self-realisation. For example, someone might find self-realisation through learning to play a musical instrument. This activity fills the need for creative expression and brings joy. Another person might volunteer at a local charity, finding fulfilment in helping others and making a difference in their community. Someone else might explore self-realization by traveling and experiencing different cultures, satisfying their curiosity and broadening their perspective. Self-realization is a broad concept that includes any action that helps people feel more complete, joyful or fulfilled. It's not just about big goals or deep thoughts, but also about everyday activities that bring comfort and happiness. Whether through work, study, hobbies, or even simple pleasures, self-realization is about finding ways to meet needs and fill gaps in life, leading to a happier and more fulfilled existence. The self-realization instinct, SRI, has some overlap with our basic survival mechanism, but it is a separate and distinct drive that can sometimes conflict with the instinct to survive. Both instincts come from the same root, like branches from the trunk of a tree, but the SRI branches off and exists independently. To understand the SRI's intensity and independence, consider people who join extreme groups and are willing to risk their lives for a cause they deeply believe in. For these individuals, Dying for a cause that validates their beliefs represents the highest form of self-realization. This shows that the SRI can be so powerful that it can override the basic survival instinct. The survival instinct is about staying alive and safe. It's the reason we seek food, shelter and avoid danger. This instinct is crucial for our day-to-day -day survival. However, the self-realization instinct, SRI, is about finding deeper meaning purpose and fulfillment in life. It's the drive that pushes people to achieve their goals, explore new ideas and understand themselves better. While the survival instinct is about protecting life, the SRI is about making life meaningful. Sometimes these two instincts can clash. For example, a person might pursue a risky career like becoming a firefighter or a soldier because it fulfills their sense of purpose and helps them achieve self-realization. Even though these jobs can be dangerous, the desire to make a difference or achieve something meaningful can be stronger than the instinct to avoid danger. In extreme cases, the SRI can lead people to take actions that put their lives at risk. This is seen in individuals who join extremist groups or take part in dangerous protests. They believe so strongly in their cause that they are willing to sacrifice their safety and even their lives. For them, Achieving self-realization through their beliefs and actions is more important than staying alive. While the self-realization instinct, SRI, and the survival instinct both come from the same fundamental drive, they are distinct and can sometimes conflict. The SRI pushes people to seek meaning, purpose and fulfillment, even if it means taking risks. This powerful drive can sometimes override the basic instinct to survive, showing just how important self-realization is to human beings. Whether through pursuing dangerous careers, engaging in extreme activities, or joining radical movements, people demonstrate the strength and independence of the SRI in their quest for a meaningful life. Working towards self-realization can greatly improve your attitude and help fight depression. This is because self-realization is all about finding happiness and fulfillment. In fact, you can think of the self-realization instinct, SRI, and the pursuit of happiness as the same thing. 
The more meaningful and important an action is for your self-realization, the more satisfaction and happiness you will get from it. Self-realization involves understanding yourself better and reaching your full potential. When you make progress in this area, it naturally boosts your mood and outlook on life. For example, when you set and achieve personal goals, you feel a sense of accomplishment and joy. This positive feeling helps combat negative emotions like depression. Self-realization and the pursuit of happiness go hand in hand because the ultimate aim of self-realization is to be happy and content. When you engage in activities that help you grow and understand yourself, you are also working towards your own happiness. This could involve learning new skills, building strong relationships, or contributing to your community. Each of these actions brings you closer to self-realization and increases your overall happiness. The more significant the activity is to your personal growth, the more joy it will bring you. For instance, completing a long-term project that you are passionate about will bring you more satisfaction than doing something trivial. The higher the importance of the task towards your self-realization, the more happiness you derive from it. When you focus on self-realization, you are also focusing on finding true happiness. Activities that are important to your growth and understanding as a person bring the most satisfaction. This means that by working towards self-realization, you can improve your mental health and overall well-being. For example, if you love painting, spending time developing your skills and creating art can bring you immense joy and fulfillment. This not only makes you happier, but also helps you feel more accomplished and positive about life. Similarly, if helping others is important to you, volunteering can greatly enhance your sense of purpose and happiness. Progressing towards self-realization helps improve your attitude and fights depression by focusing on achieving happiness. The self-realization instinct, SRI, and the pursuit of contentment are essentially the same. The more meaningful and significant the actions you take towards self-realization, the more satisfaction and happiness you will experience. By engaging in activities that contribute to your personal growth, you can enhance your mental well-being and find true fulfillment. The self-realization instinct, SRI, in its original form, is the desire to reproduce. This desire must have started at the same time as life itself because evolution could not have happened without the basic need to reproduce. SRI is powered by the urge to reproduce, evolve and grow. When people reach goals that help them towards self-realization, they feel happy and satisfied. On the other hand, when they fail to reach these goals, they often feel depressed. Because of this, the self-realization instinct acts as a driving force that pushes people forward, using both rewards, the carrot, and punishments, the stick. Now, as life evolved, the SRI grew beyond just reproduction. It now includes the desire to evolve and develop in various ways. For example, people seek to improve themselves, learn new skills, and achieve personal goals. All these actions are part of the self-realization process. When people succeed in these goals, they feel a sense of satisfaction and happiness. This positive feeling encourages them to keep striving for more. For example, when someone completes a challenging project at work or learns a new hobby, they feel accomplished and happy. This feeling of achievement is a reward that motivates them to continue pursuing their goals. Conversely, when people fail to achieve their goals, they can feel depressed and discouraged. This negative feeling serves as a reminder of what they need to work on, pushing them to try harder next time. For instance, if someone fails a test, they might feel sad, but also motivated to study more and improve. In this way, the self-realization instinct uses a carrot-and-stick approach to drive people forward. The carrot is the happiness and satisfaction they feel when they succeed, encouraging them to keep going. The stick is the sadness and frustration they feel when they fail, reminding them to keep trying and improving. For example, consider an athlete training for a marathon. The joy and pride they feel when they complete their training runs and improve their times are the carrots that keep them motivated. If they miss a training session or perform poorly, the disappointment acts as a stick, 
pushing them to work harder. The self-realization instinct, SRI, began with the basic need to reproduce and has evolved to include the desire to grow and develop in many areas of life. Achieving goals related to self-realization brings happiness and satisfaction, while failing to achieve them can lead to depression. This makes the SRI a powerful force that motivates people to keep striving for success using the carrot and stick method. By pursuing self-realization, individuals are driven to continuously improve and find fulfillment in their lives. Depression can happen if the process of self-realization is blocked. This can occur for several reasons. For example, if someone fails to achieve their goals, if they feel like they have no purpose, if their goals no longer seem important, or if they think their goals are too hard to reach, they may become depressed. Self-realization is about understanding yourself and reaching your full potential. It involves setting and achieving personal goals, finding purpose in life, and feeling fulfilled. When something gets in the way of this process, it can lead to feelings of sadness and depression. One reason for this is failing to achieve set goals. For instance, if a person has a goal to get a promotion at work but doesn't get it, they might feel like they've failed. This sense of failure can make them feel unhappy and frustrated. Another reason is feeling like there's no purpose. When someone doesn't have any goals or doesn't know what they want in life, they might feel lost and empty. Without a sense of direction, it's hard to feel motivated and positive. Sometimes, goals become irrelevant. This can happen when someone's interests or circumstances change. For example, a person who once wanted to be a musician might lose interest in music. When their old goals no longer matter, they might struggle to find new ones, leading to feelings of aimlessness. Now, people might feel their goals are too difficult to achieve. If someone sets a goal that seems impossible, they might feel overwhelmed and discouraged. For instance, if a person dreams of becoming an astronaut but believes it's out of reach, they might give up and feel defeated. All these situations can hinder the self-realization process and lead to depression. Without the ability to achieve goals, find purpose or believe in their abilities, people can feel stuck and unhappy. For example, imagine a student who dreams of becoming a doctor. If they fail an important exam, they might feel like they'll never achieve their dream. This failure can make them feel depressed and unsure about their future. If they don't find a new goal or regain confidence in their ability to succeed, their self-realization process is blocked. The process of self-realization is crucial for feeling happy and fulfilled. When this process is hindered by failure, lack of purpose, irrelevant goals, or seemingly impossible ambitions, it can lead to depression. Achieving goals, finding purpose, and believing in one's abilities are key to maintaining a positive and motivated outlook on life. The first step towards self-realization is to carefully observe your surroundings and yourself and to try to find a purpose for everything. When people meet new friends or see unusual events in their lives, they often think these things happen by chance. Because of this, they don't learn from what's happening around them. However, if people believe that everything happens for a reason and has a cause, they will eventually discover why each thing occurs. Emotions like happiness, sadness, love and hate all have reasons behind them. To achieve self-realization, you need to find this knowledge within yourself, without relying on theories from experts, scholars or books. Similarly, you must use your own understanding to figure out the reasons for things that happen in the world around you. Self-realization starts with being aware of everything around you and within you. This means paying attention to your environment and your inner thoughts and feelings. For example, if you make a new friend or experience something strange, instead of thinking it's just luck or coincidence, you should try to understand why it happened. By doing this, you can learn from every event and interaction. Imagine you witness a beautiful sunset. Instead of just enjoying the view, you might think about why it makes you feel happy. Maybe it reminds you of a good memory or helps you appreciate nature's beauty. By reflecting on these feelings, you gain a deeper understanding of yourself. This approach also applies to your emotions. When you feel happy, 
sad or angry, try to understand why. For example, if you feel angry after a disagreement with a friend, think about what caused that anger. Was it something they said, or did it remind you of a past experience? Understanding the cause of your emotions helps you learn more about yourself and how you react to different situations. Self-realization means finding this understanding within yourself. It's about trusting your own insights, rather than relying on others' theories or teachings. While experts and books can offer useful information, true self-realization comes from your own inner knowledge. For instance, instead of following a specific philosophy just because an expert recommends it, you should explore and reflect on whether it truly resonates with your experiences and beliefs. This way, your understanding and knowledge are genuinely your own. The path to self-realization begins with observing and understanding both your external environment and your inner self. Believing that everything happens for a reason and seeking to understand those reasons helps you learn and grow. This journey requires you to trust your own insights and knowledge rather than relying solely on external sources. By doing so, you gain a deeper understanding of yourself and the world around you, leading to true self-realization. The second step involves testing the knowledge people have gained. Once they understand the reasons behind their actions, which come from a combination of their instincts and logical thinking, they need to apply this knowledge in real life. This isn't a hard thing to do. For example, let's say someone realizes that doing a particular activity makes them happy. If they focus on doing more of that activity, their happiness will grow significantly. On the other hand, if they notice that another activity makes them sad, they should try to do less of it to reduce their sadness. The idea here is that if our instincts are correct, people should be able to become better and happier individuals over time. This happens by doing more of what they enjoy and less of what they don't. By continuously practicing this, they can gradually improve their overall well-being and personal development. The last step in truly understanding yourself is to see how your self-awareness holds up in the real world. Knowing yourself isn't just about feeling satisfied or fulfilling spiritual needs, it also has a big impact on the world around you. Everything in the world comes from a single source, often called God or the Supreme Being. Each person's inner self or soul is a part of this universal soul or spirit. So when a person understands their own self, they are actually gaining insight into the whole universe. This means that self-knowledge is important not just for the individual but for everyone. Every person's self is essentially the same, even though people may look different and change over time. In other words, when you truly know yourself, you also connect with the essence of all other people on the planet. Despite the differences we see on the outside, the inner self of each person is part of the same universal spirit. This understanding can help create a deeper connection with others and a greater sense of unity in the world. In today's world, there is a lot of information available, but this is often confused with true knowledge. If someone tries to take in all the information available, they may end up just being like a library full of facts without real understanding. This is because much of the information we learn can be inconsistent and unclear, making it not very useful. A person who truly understands themselves, however, gets their knowledge from deep within their spirit rather than from external sources. This means they connect with the knowledge of the entire universe and become wise in a profound way. They understand the basic principles of the universe as if they were a part of their own self, linking their own soul with the soul of the universe. Because of this deep connection and understanding, self-realization is considered the source of all true knowledge. A self-realized person can generate wisdom from within themselves. Therefore, people who have achieved self-realization are highly respected in society. Throughout history, prophets and spiritual leaders have found divine truth through self-realization. They were seen as being connected to God and became teachers who offered solutions to the world's problems. Their wisdom came from a deep understanding of both themselves and the universe making their insights valuable to humanity. 
Self-realization is the process through which people come to understand their true self, or soul. This true self is often experienced as pure consciousness or a deep awareness of one's existence. It is a state where people feel a sense of inner silence and peace. A key part of self-realization is moving beyond the idea of being a separate, individual me. Instead of seeing themselves as a distinct person with an ego, they start to see themselves as part of a greater universal consciousness. This realization helps them understand that their true self has always been, and will always be, a part of this larger consciousness. By letting go of the ego, which is the source of the feeling of being a separate me individuals can reduce a lot of the stress and anxiety that comes from this narrow sense of self. They begin to experience a sense of freedom and calm as they identify more with their true conscious self rather than their personal identity. Self-realization allows people to transcend their individual ego and connect with a greater timeless awareness, leading to a more peaceful and stress-free existence. When people identify with their individual thoughts, they start to believe that they are the ones generating these thoughts. This creates a personal me. As a result, people see themselves as separate individuals who think rationally. This me becomes the one who experiences fear, craves things and worries about various desires, concerns and ideas. This leads to a feeling of being trapped in a unique sense of I that feels disconnected from the rest of the universe. This sense of separation is the root cause of all conflicts and struggles. However, if people begin to focus on this me that claims to own all these thoughts, they will find that there is no solid me there. This realization can be achieved through meditation. When people meditate and examine this sense of me, they discover that beyond the thought I am this, there is no personal me. Instead, they find that only an impersonal being exists. By meditating and looking closely at their thoughts, people can realize that their personal identity is just a concept. Beyond this concept, they find a sense of being that is not personal but universal. This helps them understand that their true self is not the separate me they once thought, but a part of a larger, impersonal existence. This special awareness is always awake and conscious. It exists on its own, separate from all thoughts. In fact, it is the source from which all thoughts come. By using meditation or self-examination, people start to focus on what comes before their experience of being a separate me. Over time, their strong attachment to this idea of being a distinct me will fade. When this happens, people will discover their true self. They will realize that they are, at their core, pure consciousness or knowledge. This realization brings a feeling of freedom, peace and happiness. It can feel like a deep sense of calm or even love. Even though people understand that consciousness is the true nature of existence, they might still sometimes feel a bit isolated. However, this understanding helps them see that their true self is not the separate me they once thought, but a part of a larger universal awareness. This brings a profound sense of unity and peace, making them feel more connected to everything around them. This divide isn't physical, but it still exists. When people move beyond their individual self and feel connected to everything, they experience a sense of oneness. Self-enlightenment means understanding this oneness and realizing that self-realization is about being connected to everything. From the mind's perspective, this may seem like a small difference, but it is actually very important. It's an inner experience, not an external skill. Self-realization involves distinguishing between inner and outer realities while staying connected to the true self. Often, self-aware teachers will say that the world as we see it is just an illusion. This means that our everyday experiences and perceptions aren't the ultimate truth. Instead, the deeper truth lies in the understanding of oneness and the realization that everything is interconnected. In the state of oneness, there is no clear separation between the inner and outer worlds. The existence of the world is real and cannot be denied. Everything, 
both living and non-living, is interconnected. This understanding brings a great sense of relief, along with a deep feeling of love and devotion. People who experience this oneness feel connected to everything and everyone around them. They feel as if they are flowing through all of existence. There is no division because everything is alive and radiating love, just as people themselves are full of love and affection. In this state, the entire world is seen as a part of humanity, and humans are seen as the very essence of love. This profound realization helps people see that they and the world are one and the same, all connected by the same love and life force. At the heart of yoga and meditation is mindfulness. If people apply Zen practices to their daily lives, they can achieve deeper levels of meditation, ultimately leading to self-realization. This natural state of being brings constant peace and joy. Mindfulness meditation involves allowing everything to come and go while staying relaxed in the present moment. The first step is to take a deep breath. Allow the breath to flow in and out without trying to control it. As people focus on their breathing, they should also let any sensations they experience be as they are. They shouldn't focus on any particular feeling or try to resist any sensations. Practitioners of mindfulness should simply allow any sensations they feel to exist without interference. For now, one should try this. Just let the breathing happen naturally and let the feelings occur. Avoid trying to describe, analyze or imagine the sensations in any way. Just breathe and be aware of the present moment. At this stage, people need to stay calm and let things be. Mindfulness goes deep into how we think. When practicing mindfulness, people should let their thoughts come and go without trying to control them. Instead of getting wrapped up in what the thoughts are about, they should simply watch how the thoughts move in and out of their mind. The hardest part of mindfulness meditation is not getting caught up in these thoughts. People should let their thoughts pass through their mind without holding on to them. This means allowing thoughts to come and go naturally without becoming attached to them or letting them take over their attention. By doing this, they can remain peaceful and focused in the present moment. Letting go of thoughts as they come up can be really helpful. Instead of trying to push these thoughts away or control them, it's better to just let them pass by. You don't need to keep them in your mind. This approach is an important part of practicing mindfulness. Mindfulness is about being aware of the present moment without judgment. When you practice mindfulness, you focus on letting thoughts come and go naturally. This is especially important if you want to reach self-realization. Self-realization means understanding and accepting yourself completely. It involves recognizing that you are more than just your thoughts, your body and your mind. You are something deeper and more fundamental. By letting go of the constant stream of thoughts and not holding on to them, you can start to see this deeper part of yourself. This helps you connect with who you truly are beyond the surface level of daily thinking and feeling. The term self refers to who you are psychologically, your mind and your thoughts. When you have a strong and positive view of yourself, it helps you understand the differences between who you really are and who you ideally want to be. This understanding is important for getting to know yourself better. When you work on developing yourself, you gain a deeper understanding of how you think and why you think that way. This process can lead to self-realization, which means truly understanding yourself on a deeper level. A person who achieves self-realization learns to observe the world around them clearly. They know how to behave in different situations and stand out from others because of their unique perspective. Moreover, developing yourself helps you handle the ups and downs of life more practically and effectively. When you deal with your thoughts and actions rationally, you are more likely to maintain a positive attitude, even when things are tough. This positive outlook on life can make a big difference in how you experience and overcome challenges. When someone has a positive outlook on life, they grow both emotionally and spiritually. This is why when people work on improving themselves, they focus on both their mind and soul. This focus is important because as people learn more and think more clearly, they naturally move toward understanding themselves better, a stage known as self-realization. 
Self-realization can be achieved in different ways, and one important method is through meditation. Meditation is a technique that helps people reach a calm and dignified mental state. It involves being aware of oneself and understanding one's identity. Through meditation, people can find a balance between their individual selves and their connection to the larger world. This process helps them become more selfless and spiritually mature. A positive outlook on life helps people grow emotionally and spiritually. By focusing on the mind and soul, learning more and thinking clearly, people move towards self-realization. Meditation plays a key role in this journey, helping individuals achieve a calm state of mind, understand themselves better, and become more connected with the world around them. It encourages people to think beyond their own limitations. However, first, they need to learn to control their limited selves. Meditation has three main goals, self-liberation, self-regulation, and self-exploration. True living means being your true self in every part of life, rather than trying to be or have something valuable. If you live in the truth of self-realization, you will always have what you need. Any life experience starts with your senses capturing images of the event. These images are sent to the brain, which stores them in your memory. When you recall a memory, your brain responds by forming a statement about the experience. These responses are a series of thoughts. To think beyond your limits, you must first control your limited self. Meditation helps achieve self-liberation, self-regulation and self-exploration. True living is about being your genuine self, not chasing after things. Living in self-realization means you will always have what you need. Experiences are captured by your senses, stored in your brain and recalled as thoughts. One part of your mind acts as an observer, setting itself apart from other thoughts. This creates a key difference between thoughts that observe and those that are being observed. The true I and the true me seem to be the thoughts of this observer or speaker. Your true self is the way your memory reacts to things. The idea of I thought might disappear after sharing an experience, but the observer wants to keep going. I thought keeps talking to stay alive, creating new ideas and theories. All the feelings, thoughts and ideas of I thought shape your self-realization. Now one part of your mind watches your other thoughts. This is the difference between being an observer and what is being observed. Your real self is seen in how your memory responds. The I thought might fade after telling about an experience, but it wants to keep going and keeps creating new thoughts and ideas. These continuous thoughts and ideas help you understand yourself better. The observer is your memory, and what it observes is also part of your memory. This means they are essentially the same thing. The reaction of your memory forms the I, or the self, and everything the observer sees comes from images stored in your memory. There is always a delay between experiencing something through your senses and your memory's reaction to it, which forms the I thought. Because of this delay, the I and all experiences are always in the past. This means that your sense of I, along with your thoughts, beliefs and ideas, is always based on memory and therefore always in the past. The I can never truly perceive reality or live in the present moment. Life is constantly happening in the present, but the I always exists in the past. The I will never get to experience real life and will keep creating false ideas. By doing this, the observer, the I, keeps itself alive through different thoughts. Sigmund Freud's ideas have had a lasting impact on Western thinking about self-awareness, even though he was skeptical of religion and spiritual ideas. Despite some flaws in his theory of repressed memories, it has been widely accepted. His students and later psychoanalysts have continued to refine his concepts. Eric Erikson, Carl Jung and Donald Winnicott were especially important in developing Western ideas about the self, though other perspectives also emerged. Jung introduced the term individuation, which describes a lifelong process where the ego steps aside and the self becomes the centre of psychological activity. Eric Erikson's theory of psychosocial development describes how people grow and change throughout their lives. Donald Winnicott introduced the idea of the true self. 
Roberto Assagioli created a unique approach to psychology called psychosynthesis. His idea is that personal growth is a continuous, dynamic process, rather than reaching a final destination. In Buddhist philosophy, one of the world's oldest religions, the body, matter, and the spirit, awareness, are seen as completely separate. Jain philosophy emphasizes individual conscience and mindfulness. Hinduism teaches that self-realization known as moksha is crucial for achieving ultimate enlightenment and freedom. Through the insights of thinkers like Eric Erickson, Donald Winnicott and Roberto Assagioli, we see that self-development is an ongoing journey rather than a final destination. Different philosophies, from Buddhism's separation of body and spirit to Hinduism's pursuit of moksha, provide valuable frameworks for understanding self-realization. Each perspective emphasizes the importance of mindfulness, self-awareness and inner peace. Self-realization involves peeling away the false layers of one's personality to understand oneself and the true nature of reality. Self-realization is a profound journey that involves understanding and embracing our true selves beyond the surface of daily thoughts and actions. It is a continuous process of peeling away the layers of our persona to uncover the essence of who we truly are. As we engage in practices like meditation and self-exploration, we learn to see beyond the limitations imposed by our thoughts and memories. Ultimately, self-realization is about living authentically and fully in the present moment. It requires us to move beyond the confines of the I thought and its constant chatter, allowing us to experience life as it truly is. By embracing this path, we can achieve a deeper connection with ourselves and the world around us, leading to a more meaningful and fulfilled existence. Embarking on the journey of self-realization is a courageous and rewarding endeavor. It invites us to explore the depths of our consciousness, understand our true nature, and live in harmony with our inner selves and the universe. As we continue to grow and evolve, self-realization becomes not just a goal, but a way of life, a journey toward a deeper, more authentic understanding of ourselves and the world we inhabit. Thank you for listening.